I remember I got told you can do anything as long as you're willing to put your whole life on hold for it. I would say track has taken over my life, but in the best way possible. It's something that I know that I want and I love that I can say that I'm doing everything possible to make it happen. My name is Shari Hawkins. I am a Team USA heptathlete. This year is 2020, and so it's the year of the Olympics. I grew up in Rexburg, Idaho. My dad was a basketball coach, and so I'm the youngest of five children, and they are all super athletic. That was kind of our family's love language, was just playing together. So it was kind of something that was always in the family. I did not think I was gonna be a runner. None of us were ever really runners. I only did track and build because all of my friends were doing it. They all did cross country. I didn't like running and I didn't think it was going to be very fun. And then it turned out to be my actual career. So I first started track and field when I was in seventh grade. I won my first state championship in sophomore year. Then I went to college on a full scholarship to Utah State. I was a five-time All-American. And then I moved to uh, San Diego last year took my first outdoor bronze medal and qualified for my first world championships, which I competed in Doha, took 12th in the world on a sprained ankle. My daily routine, it really is hyper-focused on practicing. While I'm practicing, I'm drinking lots of water, getting the right foods, um, writing in journals, and lots of stuff during my night routine. It takes a lot. Uh, it takes a lot of strength and effort and discipline, but when you're in the heat of it and you're, you're in it and you're dedicated to it, it's almost exciting that you get to check off the things that you get to do to sacrifice for your dream. I think that the Olympics was this crazy pipe dream. And then last year, when I started really putting effort into making my first world championships and when I took the bronze medal, it was something that I thought, wow, I know I can do this. I know that if I truly believe in myself, it's something that I can do. I've been practicing, this is my second year at San Diego State University, uh, practicing every day. The head coach, Sheila Burrell, has been my coach. It's been such an amazing experience and I've gotten so much better since being here. We train a lot. <laughs> you know, the heptathletes are always the, the, first, the first athletes to the track and the last athletes to leave for heptathlon. Uh, it's seven events, right? And there is a rhythm and there's a flow to those seven events. You know, you're a jumper here, you're a thrower here, you're a sprinter here, you're a middle distance runner there. Totally different mentalities. And so to be a heptathlete or to be a multi-eventer, it takes someone that has a lot of emotional control. Before she got here, Shari had passion for the event, but didn't quite have the, the support or someone to say, this is the way to go. She understands where I'm coming from because she is herself a heptathlete and she's also been through a big part of the things that I've been through. I was a late bloomer as a Olympic athlete. I made my first Olympic team when I was 28 and I was always that kid in college that was really talented but didn't needed more time to develop to put it together and that's kind of how I see Shari. The first thing I had to teach her and how to be a good heptathlete is to rein that in and be able to be in control of yourself emotionally through an event. We all have setbacks. I think overcoming a mental journey feels better than overcoming a physical one and I feel like I'm somebody who has done both. Body type wise, I am definitely one of the smallest heptathletes out there. 
you know, my height and my build has been something that I've been able to work through. I was definitely not born for this sport, but I love that I've been able to train for it. One thing I try really hard to do is, sh is share any hardships that I go through because I've noticed that if I would have known about them before, I wouldn't have felt the pain as much. I think every single person has some sort of stress or anxiety. My anxiety was the kind of anxiety that freezes everything. I honestly may as well have had the flu because I felt like I was going to throw up any moment. And that was a problem that I dealt with for years. It wasn't until last year, I started asking myself, why is this happening? And I realized when I won, I felt like I got praised and praised and praised. And when I didn't win, it was almost as if I was invisible. And I took that to mean subconsciously that when I compete well, I am worth something. And when I don't, I am not worth anything. Once I really internalized this, I remember there was just this flow of energy through me that took me by surprise. And I thought, that is absurd. And I started listing all of the things that I thought I was good at, no matter what happened in track. And I realized if track were taken away tomorrow, or if I did terrible at track, would any of these things change? And none of them changed. And that was kind of my first kind of coming to terms with, that is why your anxiety is happening, but look, it's not the case. And I started identifying what was real and what wasn't. And actually last year um, was the first year ever in my entire career as a heptathlete that I did a competition without an anxiety attack. Mental illness isn't something you can just cure, but I think it is definitely something you can overcome. About a week before World Championships, which by far was the biggest competition I had ever done, I was long jumping and I sprained my ankle very badly. It was a mess, like with a severe sprain on all my ligaments. The second that it happened, I knew something was bad. But the second that it happened, I knew everything was gonna be okay. I flew into Doha, taped it up, and just went right on my merry little way. It was crazy. The second that we walked out onto the track, it was as if nothing was wrong. And for somebody who has past anxiety, I thought I was gonna be nervous the entire time. And I've never felt so calm. I've never felt so focused. And though there were a lot of obstacles in the way and I definitely felt my ankle the whole time, there was so much in me that I was proud of for being there. Every event that I did, I pushed through and didn't give myself any excuses and it's a pretty proud moment. And that's kind of what I meant when I said that overcoming your mental demons can feel more liberating than overcoming your physical ones. We've identified exactly what we need to do in order to you know, get the Olympic standard, and to make the team. She's taken a lot of ownership for her own home belief, like removing limitations of what she believes she can and she can't do and what she's capable of. And we've talk, we talk a lot about that. The first step, no matter what the score is at, at Olympic trials, make the team. I wanna be in a place where I don't just go, I wanna compete, I wanna be with the best and I want to compete with the best, and I want to beat the best. If that means winning gold at the Olympics, then awesome, let's do it. And I'm up for the challenge, and I'm not blind to the fact that there are athletes who are bigger, faster, taller, stronger. Um, 
I'm not, I'm not blind to that, but I can do anything in 2020.